Welcome to the Fanboy Forecast Audio Podcast. All things manga and anime. And talking about video games. Bryce will speak his mind. Discussing all the wrongs and rights. It's the Fanboy Forecast. It's the Fanboy Forecast. Hello and welcome to episode 83 of the Fanboy Forecast. I'm your host, Bryce Winant, and today I'm reviewing a real cool game that came out last year. Near Automata. Near Automata is a sequel to Near, which is a game last generation, which I do plan to play in the near future. Sorry, I won't, I won't keep doing that. But anyway, Near Automata, which I have been pronouncing Automata on OG, is an action RPG set many years after the first Near. Basically, humankind has been forced off the Earth by the machine army of other world invaders, and humans have made the moon their last stand. Humankind is using an android army to fight the machines, and the story focuses on two of them, 2B and 9S. The story goes in a lot of crazy places with excellent twists, and overall, I think the story is great. But I do have to sort of front load this review with a complaint because I have to talk about the story structure. Your first playthrough will be controlling 2B, the combat android model, and the story ends with some loose ends. I had thought the next playthrough would be what happens next, but no. Instead, you play through the events of the first playthrough from 9S's perspective. This would be fine, but 2B and 9S are together a lot, which is good. They have a good dynamics between the two of them. But the second playthrough felt really unneeded because you're just doing the same thing you did the first time, but with a couple extra scenes. And they're great scenes. You do get the story to continue after route A and B, which is really good from a story perspective, but it comes at a price. I think it is absolutely worth seeing the story to the end, but it's a lot of repeated content, so that would be a hard pill for someone to swallow. I'll leave the details of the stories out in this review because I think it's really worth seeing fresh. Just know it can go some very tragic and very weird directions. The game also has a ton of other endings that you can achieve that sort of end the story early. Completionists will hunt these down for sure, but I was fine watching a bunch of them online after I beat the game. There's also a lot of side quests with some story content worth seeing. I kind of wish I did more side quests, but as I said, with the second playthrough, this game was getting a little long, and I kind of just beeline to the end, towards the end, which is too bad, because I hear really good things. Nier Automata is developed by Platinum Games, developers of the excellent Bayonetta games, as well as other less great games. Unlike Bayonetta, which is an action game first and foremost, Nier Automata leans a little bit more heavily into the RPG of the action RPG genre. You're still slashing and timing dodges, but don't go into Nier thinking it will have a deep as a combat system as something like Bayonetta. It's just not what this game is. This can be a problem during long combat stretches, but the ability to equip any weapon as your heavy attack or your light attack helps customize your moveset and keeps things from getting too dull. Also, you have this drone that follows you that you can make shoot while attacking, allowing you to do extra damage and fight from afar. You can also equip super moves of all sorts to your drone. There are some interesting wrinkles of the gameplay and combat, though. On a number of occasions, Nier turns into a top-down vertical scrolling shooter. These never become bullet hell shooters though, at least not on normal, so don't worry. They're just a fun little break from the hack and slashing. 9S also has the ability to hack into enemies, which is done by playing a little hacky game that resembles twin stick shooters like Geometry Wars. It adds some variety to play through number two, but it doesn't justify having to play through the whole game again as 9S. The RPG elements in Nier feel familiar, but are applied in novel ways. You can equip chips to a loadout for your character, but each chip has a point level, and there is a maximum how many points you can equip. This includes defense boosts, HP boost, damage boost, etc. But you can free up more space for stat boosters if you unequip the basic chips, such as the HUD elements, like life bars. The weapons you obtain throughout the game can also be upgraded with crafting ingredients you collect. The cool part is that as you upgrade your weapons, a short story begins to be revealed for each weapon. It's really cool. And almost we want to go crazy getting all the weapons upgraded, but I'll say I came across certain crafty items very rarely sometimes. For instance, I completed all the main playthroughs of the game, but never was able to upgrade my pod because pure water was so hard to come by, which is strange. Why do you need pure water to upgrade a machine? but I don't know, whatever. That's neither here nor there. The point was, it was very difficult to find enough to do it, so I kind of gave up. The presentation in your Automata is overall really good. It isn't going to wow anyone on a graphical power level, but I love the design of the androids and the robots. The androids look like young teens with blindfolds and black outfits. It's very anime, but at the same time feels right, especially with the setting of the game. The robot enemies mostly have these very almost cute designs with simple round heads and square bodies and stubby arms. Some look a little more menacing than others, but still, they kind of have this weird cute look, but they'll come at you viciously, and I think it all works really well. Sadly, the world doesn't look quite so good. The empty seas and fires are designed well, but it does feel a little last generation in quality. Still, they serve the purpose fine, and honestly, it just works. Still, they're perfectly acceptable. Unless you're really looking for a high graphical presentation, I think you're going to like the way Nier looks, especially if you like the anime look. One thing I have no issues with is the soundtrack. Holy hell, this is a good OST. The soundtrack ranges from peaceful to intense to eerie, depending on the moment, and it's often paired with this French slash Japanese made up language. The music will change subtly as you move around areas, such as the music dropping out as you head down a back alley in this abandoned amusement park run by machines, for example. In addition, when you hack an enemy or inside them, the current music turns to an 8 bit sounding version of that song. If nothing else, listen to the Nier Automata soundtrack. As a bit of a side note, when I first tried to play Nier on my PS4 last spring, I encountered a very strange bug that made all the menus random characters and basically unusable. I thought this was just a weird game being weird, 
and I'd eventually be able to translate my menus, but that's not the case. It turns out it's a bug. I guess something must have been patched by the next time I tried to play last fall because I had no issues, but I guess be aware of that. Nier Automata goes in a lot of great directions. It's totally worth seeing. However, when you consider the unneeded second playthrough with the lower production values, it might be asking a lot for some people to see this one to the end, unless they're very dedicated to it. I even admit, I took a pretty big break from Nier after the second playthrough, probably a couple weeks before I got on and finally finished it. I'm glad I did return to it though. It also makes me very curious about the original Nier, so I'll have to give that a try. Luckily, someone got that me as a gift. This is definitely one of Platinum's better games though. You can check out more about OG Link 1P0N. That'll take you to the game's official site. And also feel free to send any comments or questions to Bryce at TalkGeneration.net. Anyway, that's it for me. Until next time, take care. Oh shoot, they're coming for me.